Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back again with another video. This video is actually part of Alta News fourth anniversary celebration blog hop. So I'm using a couple of different products by them today. The Trigonometry stamp set, the Forever and Always stamp set and dies. And then I'm also using the Peony Spray stamp set, but I didn't show it to you because I didn't know I was going to use it at the beginning. So here I have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. It's cut down. I am stamping um, one of the two rose bouquets that's included in the Forever and Always set. Um, and it's funny because when I originally looked at the set, like the way that the this particular bouquet is in the set, it's like kind of on the side to the left. And I was like, wow, that's a really weird arrangement. Um, but let me see what I can do with it. And then I put it in my Misty to stamp it upright because I wanted to put it on a uh, three inch piece of paper and, uh, or piece of paper, like it's notebook paper, right? A piece of cardstock. And then I realized um, how the orientation was actually supposed to look. And then that totally changed my game plan for my whole card. So funny how things work out. So we're going to dive right into the coloring on this one. Um, I am using Altenews Artist Markers. They have three sets out, A, B, and C. I have all three of them, and I'm using all three of them today. Um, so I really just love these bouquets. I'm a huge fan of any kind of flower stamp. You know that. Um, but the bouquets where I don't have to build them myself, really, really like that. So I'm going in with my lightest color, and I'm mapping out where my shadows are going to be with roses because they're um, such a multi-petaled flower, I usually go in and just do a very um, small line of color where I want my shadows to be. And I don't, on the first go round, um, I don't really stretch out the color any farther than just that one line. Um, as I, you, if you come here, you know that I usually use my Copics. Um, the only other alcohol marker that I have ever actually found that I liked are these artist markers. Um, I've tried other brands. Um, I think the one that kind of, the reason that these ones kind of set apart is because they still do have the brush nib. Um, they are a cheaper price point than Copics, but they are not refillable. So that's the difference. With, with Copics, you buy that one marker, you'll only ever buy it once. You'll be able to change the nib. You'll be able to refill the ink. Um, with these ones, it's not, um, not so much that way, but, um, it's definitely a cheaper price point if you want to try alcohol markers. I would recommend them. I think the nib on them is very good, especially for getting into um, smaller areas like this rose. I didn't have any issues at all um, where like the nib was soft or kind of mushy. Um, it was, it stayed at a really good point and so I didn't have any trouble. Um, but anyway, if you've never been here before, <laughs> then um, you don't know that I start at my lightest marker, work out to my darkest, from my darkest back into my lightest. And that's just the way that I do it every time. That's what works for me. You do whatever works for you. Um, so when I was going through and trying to pick out this color combination, I had originally stamped a background because um, I told you I had a certain idea for how I was going to do the card. And so I stamped a full background with the trigonometry set. And then you'll you'll see it later. I didn't show it to you because I didn't end up using it. I ended up um, changing the design. Um, but so it was just, <laughs> I did this whole thing and it was like 30 minutes, maybe not 30 minutes, maybe I'm exaggerating, like 20 minutes worth of work. And um, then I didn't even end up using it. I'm hoping to maybe use it on another card because I do really like the way that it came out. Uh, it just didn't make sense for this one. So when I get out to my darkest color, I'm not adding it to all, like I'm not going over the line completely. I'm only adding it to the parts that I want to be the darkest. So where the petals are inset, where um, there's several uh, petals gathered together, the center of the flower. And now as I work my way back out to my lightest color, I am going to start doing a little bit of those flicking motions. And you'll see me start to turn my paper. And the reason that I'm turning my paper is because when you're coloring when you're when you're doing the flicking you want the flicking to go in the direction of the petal so however the petal is drawn if it's a petal that is down and to the right then you should be arcing your um flicks your strokes so that they are down and to the right so that they're rounded to follow that object um in this case in my case it's a petal um, one of the other things, and it's probably been a while since I talked about it, is um, creating kind of a wall of color, which is what I just did on that petal there. And what I mean by a wall of color is all of your strokes end in the same spot. So it just looks like 
Um, there's no variation and things don't look like that in nature and it looks very manufactured and it's not something that I'm a fan of. Um, plus you want to, as you go through, you want to maintain a highlight. Highlights and um, shadows is what's going to give you dimension. That's how uh, you're going to make it look like it's popping, like this, this flower is blooming on your paper, is by um, having darkest darks and lightest lights. Now your two mid-tones, in my case I have two because I use four colors, but if you only use three you'll have one mid-tone. That should be the color that you see the most of. You should have minimal shadows, minimal highlights for the most part of what you're coloring. Um, so here I'm out to my lightest color. I'm just going to go in and fill in any of those white areas that I still have showing. Um, I was relatively happy with how it turned out. Um, I feel like I had a little bit of trouble blending the third color into the second color. Um, just a, just a little bit of difficulty. I believe these blue, these little buds on the side are supposed to be colored green completely, but I wanted another excuse to add in a little bit more color. So I decided that I was going to add just a little bit of shading from the top down. I'm going to do the same thing with the one up here on the left with this purple flower. Um, this one is drawn just slightly different. First of all, it's tucked behind the first one. So you're automatically going to have a shadow along that line where they meet. So anytime you have two objects, one tucked behind another, that's going to be a shadow on the object that's tucked behind. Um, I am, you can see, being a little bit freer with adding um, the flicks kind of right out the gate. And this is because I have more surface area to work with. It does have a very tight bud in the center. Um, but most of the other leaves are, leaves, petals, <laughs> most of the other petals are um, very open and so I can get away with doing those little um, flicks of color kind of right out the gate. But as I get closer to the darkest color, I'm, I'm going to bring it back down to that line until I can kind of figure out what I'm doing. This is a very detailed stamp um, and in the center here it is a little bit difficult to kind of ascertain what's going on. Uh, as long as you have some areas that are highlights and some areas that are low lights, don't stress about it. It's still going to look like a rose. Um, so don't worry about that part. And then same thing as before, working out, you know, to the, to the darkest color and back into the lightest. So I'm going to, if you've been here before, you know, sometimes we have little chats about my day. And um, in between that, I will tell you what I'm doing with the coloring. So um, if you watched my, my video yesterday from the Hero Arts Blog Hop, you know I said today was a day. Today was a day. Oh, it was a day. Um, so here's how my day went. And I'm hoping that you guys won't be able to sympathize with my situation. So I have a, a four-year-old son, my little peanut, and my little peanut wants to just be everywhere that his dad is. And... Um, so I was, my husband usually takes him to my parents' house in the morning. We decided that I was going to take him instead of my husband because I was going to be getting um, started later doing the things that I needed to do. Um, so he, my son's room is, um, he is oh, constantly woken up by the garage door is basically the gist of it. So my husband leaves for work. I wake up to him just screaming bloody murder. Oh my gosh, you think, I mean, it was just crazy. And he's, he's crying and I go in there and I'm like, what is, like, what is the deal? And he's like, I thought daddy was taking me to Nana and Papa's. And like, he's just totally inconsolable as he is. <laughs> His poor, he's so heartbroken that he's going to have to ride, not in the truck, um, but in the car. And I don't understand why, because like, I have a luxury compact. I don't get the deal, but I know I'm not. I'm not his dad. He, want, he wants to go with daddy. It's totally fine. So he is just completely inconsolable while he's crying. Um, he just completely is just losing his mind. We, I finally get him calmed down. He will not go back to sleep. Um, he's going to go ahead and get dressed for the day. It had snowed the night before. So I'm like, make sure you're picking warm clothes. He goes to open the drawer, the drawer front of his dresser drawer, like comes off on one side, <laughs> just completely like, um, they're like pegs. Like it's not like screws. It's like pegs that fit into each other. And, um, it just completely comes out. So now I'm trying to get it back in. I cannot get it back in. So the drawer front is like dangling off 
it's only connected on one side. He picks out a polo shirt and I'm like, you need to pick something warmer than that. It's cold out. It's very early in the morning. The sun is barely up. There's snow on the ground. I want to wear this one. I mean, I'm arguing with a toddler who is overtired, who is crying. And I'm like, you know what? You do you. You want to wear that polo? You wear that polo. I'm going to put a winter coat on you anyway. That's on you. So we do that. I drive him over to my parents. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus for, for grandparents who are, who will babysit and watch, watch kids. So drive him over to my parents. I come home. I'm doing all the things that I need to get done. Um, my husband picks him up from my parents' house, um, brings him home. I have not eaten all day. I'm running on, I, I have a t-shirt that says running on coffee and cuss words. And that is legit. That was my day, guys. <laughs> that was my day. Um, and so he brings him home. I don't even have like time to even have like, I have like minimal discussion. I'm editing a video. My little peanut is sitting on my lap while I'm doing that. Um, my husband made dinner. I didn't even have time to eat. I, um, literally two hours ago, it's now one o'clock in the morning. Um, by the way, when I'm doing this voiceover, I was eating, my, my mother makes this thing, we call them little chicken in my family. Little chickens are delicious. Basically what little chickens are is like, almost like homemade chicken nuggets. It's like chicken breast that is um, breaded and pan fried. And they're the best thing that you ever ate. They're amazing. Like we fight over them. Like if my mom makes little chicken, like my sisters will like send me a text message and be like, went to mom's, got little chicken. Like, like it's a badge of honor and then I gotta call my mom and be like where where's my little where's my little chicken like did you give them my little chicken did they come over and eat all the little chicken where's the little chicken um and it's delicious but anyway so my mother did make little chickens and so I'm eating I'm standing in my kitchen eating little chickens the out of right straight out of the refrigerator nah it's straight out of the refrigerator um and then I am um, what did I what else did I have oh I had cheesy potatoes from brunch Easter brunch yesterday uh, from my in-laws. Um, so that was my meal while I stood in the, the kitchen. And then I needed coffee. Um, I hit a stop at the gas station. Side note for this card. Um, so here I'm using the, the blues for these little teeny tiny flowers, which are super pretty. And I just added shading out from the middle. That's, that's all I did to it. Um, so anyway, so I needed coffee and I needed, um, to go to the gas station. So I went in my pajamas. I'm not even kidding. I didn't even have time to be classy. Classy people have time to put on real people clothes. Not me. Mm -mm. I threw a sweatshirt on over my pajama top. I wore sweatpants and straight up slippers out my house, out my house to the gas station, to the Dunkin' Donuts. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I need me some Dunkin' Donuts in my life. Um, yeah, I didn't, I did not like, I don't know. I, oh, my hair was in a ponytail. Yesterday's makeup on. I mean, like, I, it's so funny to me because, like, I do these YouTube videos and, and voiceovers and, and we talk and I share my life with you guys and, and I love that because a lot of you guys will comment all the time and be like, you're so real. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, but I think to myself, what will I ever, some of these people live around me. Like, what will I ever do if I'm standing in a gas station one day in my holy sweatpants and my sweatshirt with no makeup on and my hair in a half of a bun? Um, and somebody hears me speak and they're like, your voice sounds really familiar. Do I know you? Like, I'll die. Okay, I, will imme I won't be able to make any more YouTube videos because I'll be dead on the gas station floor. I'm just complete, just b mortifying embarrassment. Like, <laughs> But there's your warning. If you ever run into me and you don't want to kill me, um, make sure that I, I'm put together before you, you approach. If I don't, if I look like I just left the local Walmart, um, don't say anything cause I'll die. Anyway. Um, so now we're moving back onto the leaves here. Um, I really do like the green combinations that they have in this artist marker set. This is the only green combination that they have. Um, but it's a yellow green and that's what I have a tendency, um, to move toward when I'm picking them even out of my Copics. So that's, um, totally fine with me as I'm, they don't have any lines or anything in them. So I'm kind of cr trying to create some shape, within them with the lines. These particular leaves, while they don't have any kind of like detail added into them, they do have a wavy outline. So I am accenting that by doing just like one little flick of color where the lines are drawn in. And this is going to give them a little bit more depth and shape. Um, 
so nothing's really changed here as far as the coloring. I am being very minimal with my darkest color um, just because I don't want it to completely overtake my leaves and those two stems that you see. So apparently this is just, it's this is going to be like the never ending, the never ending day. Um, this is, I think I had to stop this voiceover like three different times and this most recent time when I just had to start over again um, was because I was talking with my hands and I always talk with my hands. I'm not even Italian, but I cannot help myself. Um, I actually hit the microphone. Like I just smacked it. <laughs> oh my Lord, I need to go to sleep. Um, so anyway, this is the the same thing that I've that I that I have been doing. I almost just did it again. Like honestly, I'm gonna have to sit on my hands like a toddler. Um, so here I told you that was the only green combination they have. In order to create a little bit of difference in the other greens in the background, I'm actually starting with my lightest yellow color, and I'm just going to fill in all of those greens. And well, what I want to be green, I'm going to fill those all in. But this is important. See this one up here on the top left kind of looks like, I don't know, seaweed, which is what I thought, by the way, like as I was coloring this, I was like, these are some weird looking leaves. But you know, I mean, I guess there's all different kinds of leaves. Those leaves kind of look like seaweed. And then it, I realized after I colored it, shaded it, everything else, I happened to glance over at the, um, image like because they have Altenew has them colored on the back of their stamp sets there's two buds in this bouquet guys two of them two buds I colored them as if they were le just green green leaves what what am I doing I have no idea so I'm going to use the tealish blue color to color up the um the rest of the leaves and then I'm going to go back in and deal with my kind of disaster. I didn't do anything spectacular with these, just added a little bit of shading at the base of the leaves and along the stem. So here, Altenew does not have like a colorless blender or a color remover. So I'm using my Copic um, colorless blender. It is, I mean, they're all alcohol markers. It did lift up the color a little bit, but not a ton. And now I got to dope out a way to cover this up, right? Because I don't want like seaweed looking leaves. So here's how I, I went in with the red and the reason that I decided to do the red was like blue would probably have covered it and it would have been fine. Um, but the reason I went with red is because red and green are complementary colors. If you add like you're mixing watercolor paints or something, if you add a little bit of green, not a lot, a little bit to your red, it will tone it so that it is darker. So I was knew that if I put the, like I bleached most of it out, but if I put the red over it, that it would be mostly okay. And it, and it was. So you saw me use a white gel pen to add in some highlights to my petals. I'm going to outline um, this entire image because I like a bold black outline. And then here is something that's a little bit new. So Altenew has a mini die cutting machine. And I was like, I'm going to be honest. I was like, there's a hundred die cutting machines. Why do I need this? Well, it's mini and it's compact. And I really like that. Do you see how fast I'm turning this thing? Can you see it? I'm turning it so fast. And in my head, I was like, there's no way this cut. I'm going to have to get a shim. Are you kidding me this day? And then I flipped it over and it cut. It was like the easiest die cutting machine I ever used in my life. I didn't even have to like hold it down. I didn't have to wrestle with it. There was no muscle involved, which is good because I don't have a lot of upper body strength. Um, it was amazing and it's like super compact. So yeah, highly recommend that thing right there. You're gonna be seeing that a lot. Plus it's really easy for me to get on camera, which I love. So this is the um, the stamped background that I did. I didn't like it. So I tried filling in some of the squares, uh, squares, triangles. Yeah, I swear, I know my shapes. Um, wow, I, I'm an educated woman. I am an educated woman. Um, so anyway, I didn't love it. And it, not that I didn't love the background, I did love the background, but it was too busy. So I'm changing it up. So here I'm finding the middle of my paper and I'm using my grid, uh, my Simon Says Stamp grid mat in the background. And I'm just counting the squares so it's really easy to find the center. And then I'm going to use my T-square ruler to draw that line. Here there's multiple, which are super cool, um, multiple triangles in the trigonometry set. And I really love them you're going to see me kind of like cut in and out because I line it up, but then I have to have my head right on top of it to make sure that I'm stamping it straight. Um, 
and I used the other triangles, like where those lines are, and that's how I matched them up. So I really loved the way this one came out. I have put a obnoxious amount of foam tape on the back of my die cut piece. I also heat embossed a sentiment. Um, so I'm going to pull off the foam tape. I'm going to put this down in the center. I was like, at least I made a card that I really loved. And I really do love this card. I realize yeah, it's maybe a little bit minimalist and it's not going to be everybody's style. I'm cool with it. It's my style. Um, so here, this is from the uh, Peony Spray set. It says, create your own happiness. Love that sentiment. True. Create your own happiness, people. Other people are not responsible for your happiness. And then I was like, I'm done. But I wasn't done because I didn't like it. And I felt like this sentiment was covering up too much of my flowers and I was not happy with it. So I tried a whole bunch of different things. I tried cutting it up. I tried removing the foam tape. I tried doing a, a whole lot of stuff. And I didn't like it because I kept changing the shape of my design. So what I ended up deciding to do is stamp the sentiment along the side so that it didn't change my design at all. It kind of flowed with the um, angular shape that was already there. And I, but I did have to kind of peel up that leaf a little bit because it's up on foam tape. So that was a risk on my part. Thankfully, I gambled and I won. But that is the whole card. So there are huge amounts of prizes on this Alt New Blog Hop. It's going on for the next three days. It will be linked below if you're watching on YouTube. I encourage you to head over the blog for your chance to win. And I will catch you guys on the next video, hopefully after I've had a lot of sleep. Bye.